Nice, yeah. let's do it. All right. All right. Not the nicest days out, got a little rain. When you see rain in the forecast and you're driving to the ballpark or if you see it um, in the week ahead and you got some games going on, does it make you want to stay in bed a little bit longer? <laughs> I am always, I always want to get the games in. I like to just keep on schedule. I think play, as players, you either want them to call it early or you want to find a way to play. The last thing you want to do is stay until 9.30, 10 o'clock, then start, you know, you know what I mean? And no, and then have them cancel it because you're gonna have to make that game up anyway. So you'd rather get that off day rather than it doesn't really seem like an off day. So. And you do get to the ballpark and then there's a rain delay. What are you doing inside the clubhouse? Like what is the go-to thing for you? You know, if I'm pitching and it's a delay, I kind of stay in the weight room and sort of keep the heart rate up, try to get an idea. Then I can kind of shut it back down and restart it. But if, it, if we don't know and it's potential it's gonna start soon, I kind of like to try to stay in the mindset that this thing's happening soon and be ready. You're from Illinois and you're near a very famous and popular spot, Rips Tavern. Yes. Yeah. You go there? Rips. <laughs> that is famous. They got the lockdown on the fried chicken market. <laughs> it's always nice whenever you could kind of talk about something that reminds you about home. It's fun to just even right now like remember that and think about that or you have those good memories and you can kind of you know just sense the atmosphere from 20 25 years ago when you were a kid going there so it's fun to talk about that stuff if you had to tell a baseball fan one place in the city to definitely hit where would it be so if somebody goes to philadelphia where are they heading and why I look back and that was one of my first sushi experiences was going to morimoto there and i feel like that's a good it's got a good reputation, really good food. How about Seattle? Uh, Metropolitan Grill in Seattle. It's like an old school steakhouse. Okay. Really good. There we go. So how about Houston? The Inn at the Ballpark. It's a hotel. And they have a little lobby and a little restaurant right in the lobby. They got good food. And right next to that is a place called Vic and Anthony Steakhouse. Toronto. One of my favorite spots is called the Carbon Bar. You might not think of it, but they have like this barbecue smoke platter. Do you order a nap with it too, or uh, <laughs> that just hits you as you're that leaving? That just comes, yeah. <laughs> you're ready for bed as soon as you get home from that one. <laughs> so how about Pittsburgh? I think it was like Nikki's Thai. Really good. We got takeout from there a lot. Every was, day? And that's right downtown. Yeah, pretty much every day. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That leaves New York, what you got? Yeah. Last year, I guess we went to this really good steakhouse down on like 34th or 36th Street called Keen's. Mm -hmm. A real old school place. There's like pipes all over the wall from guys that used to come in and smoke their pipe and they just leave it there <laughs> for the next time they came back. <laughs> Pretty cool vibe. So I'm going to bring this back. Out of all the places that you just named, is Rips better <laughs> than all of them? For a one-time experience to get yourself fried chicken, small town, hometown feel, I'd rate that number one for a one-time only. Awesome. If you search you online, your name, there's a fan out there. It was her birthday, and she actually put your face on her birthday cake and she was surprised by her coworkers. Really? That's a special fan right there. <laughs> I can see guys like Judge, I can see his face being on a lot of cakes. Not so much J-Hat, but I will take it. There's another photo of oh, you fun. online where uh, somebody snapped a photo of you on the subway. That was after my first start in New York, after I got traded. I was real paranoid that I was going to miss my stop. So I, after every stop, I kept looking at the map, make sure I'm not missing it. but. Uh, it was later, I didn't know that, you know, I didn't have a car up there, so I didn't know how guys usually did stuff. I was still trying to figure that out, so that was different. There's probably fans out there who are wondering if or when you will ever get Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or whatever yeah. it may be. And the reason why I ask is because when you at first started playing, like, none of that was really around. Right. You know, and it happens so gradually over time, or it happens and then you get used to it within a week, so you don't even remember sort of what it was like without it. Like, you think of sort of the clubhouse atmosphere and, like, guys weren't on their phones all the time, mm -hmm. you know, and now a lot of times 
people are and guys like to stay connected and see what's going on. Some guys really enjoy it, use it well. You've been in the big leagues now for what, over 10 years? Yeah. That was always the dream. I mean, that was always coming up, you, t you hear guys talk about the 10 year mark. Mm -hmm. So we go back to 2005 when you were at the Lake with Blue Claws. Right. A long time ago. Because you had the flow back then. <laughs> Remember that? You had the locks. And yeah. your style has changed a little bit over the years. Yes, it has. And you've been going with the bald head look, which is a good look. I had, to, I had to do it. I had no choice. <laughs> but yeah. Do you miss that look? I honestly don't barely remember what it's like to like do anything after I shower with my hair. Like I have no idea. I asked a few different people if they had to guess what type of outfit that you'd wear, what like what would it be? And I got everything from boots and a and a cowboy hat to <laughs> like very like J. Crew. Okay. You know? Yeah. So you got literally Anything and everything in the spectrum. The fit that you've been wearing this entire spring training has been nice, comfortable, and relaxed, like what you got on right now. For sure. It's nice. Now, like a lot of you, even your nicer clothes when we travel and stuff, they have things that stretch and move and moisture wick. And <laughs> I think it's just trying to find the right fit. You know, mm -hmm. you want to have the clothes that fit you right. Mm -hmm. And that can be a challenge for, for me. So it takes a while to find that. So I'm the kind of guy, if I find something that I like, I think it fits right. I'll try to get you in every color that you got. <laughs> Isn't it crazy that when you're in the minors, people don't really understand or know where you're going or what you do. But then once you get to the big leagues, then all of a sudden it's like, wow, Jay plays baseball. <laughs> right, yeah. And there's also, there's also the side where it's like, oh, you got drafted? When are you gonna be on whatever? I think, you know, some people, might not even realize the minor league side of it, that there's levels to work through and there's no guarantee, you know? It seems like everything's really paid off though because now you're here in New York and over 10 years in the bigs. It's one of those, you know, cliches you just have would have no idea if you would have known 10 years ago. The trajectory, the path, everything, the ups, the downs. I think it's what makes the game so fun and so difficult and so rewarding and so frustrating and just all those emotions mm -hmm. over the course of your career that you never know how it's gonna play out. It's just, you know, you get drafted and you just have this dream where it's, I'm gonna do whatever it takes, mm -hmm. you know? And it's never gonna be a situation where I don't think I can do it. It's like, I'm just gonna outlast everybody if I can, you know? It's like, I'm gonna do literally whatever I can do.